Angus McCaskill, 1825 the 8th of August 1863, was a Scottish-born Canadian giant. The 1981 Guinness Book of World Records says he is the strongest man who ever lived, tallest non-pathological giant in recorded history at 7 feet 9 inches, 2.36 meters, and had the largest chest measurements of any non-obese man at 80 inches, 200 centimeters. Early life McCaskill was born on the Isle of Berneray in the Sound of Harris, Scotland. His father was Norman McCaskill, who was 5 feet 9 inches, 1.75 meters tall, and his mother was Christina Campbell. He had 12 siblings, several of whom died young, and he was an ordinary-sized baby. After several years in Stornoway, Outer Hebrides, the family settled in the fishing community of Englishtown, Cape Breton Island, around 1831. Young McCaskill was said to be of normal stature, but in entering his adolescence he began to grow rapidly and by his 20th year had attained 7 feet 4 in 2.24 meters, eventually reaching 7 feet 9 in 2.36 meters within another year or two. His early adult weight was 390 pounds, 180 kilograms. His shoulders were 44 inches, 110 centimeters wide, and the palm of his hand 8 inches, 20 centimeters wide and 12 inches, 30 centimeters long. His wrists were 13.5 inches, 34 centimeters, in circumference. His ankles measured 18 inches, 46 centimeters, in circumference. By 1863, he was wearing boots 17.5 inches, 44 centimeters, long. His feet were probably around 16 inches long and 8 inches wide. He had deep-set blue eyes and a musical, if somewhat hollow voice, and a mild and gentle manner. Despite his size he was well proportioned. He was known in his home community of St. Anne's as Guile Moore, translated to Big Boy. He was also known to many as the Cape Breton Giant, or simply Giant McCaskill. When McCaskill was approximately 14 years old he traveled on a fishing schooner from St. Anne's to North Sydney and the crew took him along to a dance. An altercation with a dancer led to McCaskill striking his tormentor's jaw with his fist. The man landed in the middle of the floor and was unconscious for so long the other dancers thought he was dead. When the captain returned to his schooner he found McCaskill on his knees praying that he had not killed the man. Adult career McCaskill was well known for feats of strength such as lifting a ship's anchor weighing 2,800 pounds, 1,300 kilograms, to chest height, and an ability to carry barrels weighing over 350 pounds, 160 kilograms, a piece under each arm or reputedly able to lift a hundredweight 50 kilograms, with two fingers and hold it at arm's length for 10 minutes, in 1849 he entered show business and went to work for P.T. Barnum's Circus, appearing next to General Tom Thumb. In 1853 he toured the West Indies and Cuba. Queen Victoria heard stories about McCaskill's great strength and invited him to appear before her to give a demonstration at Windsor Castle, after which she proclaimed him to be the tallest, stoutest and strongest man to ever enter the palace, and presented him with two gold rings in appreciation. The fishermen of St. Anne's envied McCaskill's strength. While they laboriously bailed their boats, McCaskill set his weight under his two-ton boat, tipped it on its beam ends and reportedly emptied the bilge water. He reportedly single-handedly set a 40-foot, 12 meters, mast into a schooner. He was also said to have been able to lift a fully grown horse over a four-foot fence. There are various accounts of an incident with an anchor that may have taken place in New York or New Orleans. French sailors apparently taunted McCaskill to lift an anchor lying on the wharf, which was estimated to weigh 2,200 to 2,700 pounds, 1,000 to 1,220 kilograms. McCaskill easily did so and walked down the wharf with it, but one of the anchor's flukes caught in one of his shoulders, crippling him. However, this was not the cause of his death, as he lived for many years thereafter. After a show business career demonstrating his size and strength in Europe and North America, he returned to his home community of Englishtown and purchased a gristmill, a general store and several other properties. Death in the summer of 1863 McCaskill undertook a trip to the colonial capital at Halifax, where he had been planning to sell produce and purchase stock for his store that he would need for the winter season from the city's wholesalers. During the trip, he suddenly became seriously ill and was returned to St. Anne's, where his family moved him back to his parents' home. His original childhood bed was hastily lengthened and put up in their living room to provide for his care. The doctor's diagnosis was brain fever. After a week's illness, McCaskill died peacefully in his sleep on August 8, 1863, the Presbyterian minister the Reverend Abraham McIntosh and many neighbors being in attendance in the house. The Halifax Acadian recorder of August 15, 1863, reported that the well-known giant was by far the tallest man in Nova Scotia, perhaps in British America, and that his mild and gentle manner endeared him to all who had the pleasure. 
three of his acquaintance, the whole county mourned and he was buried in the English town cemetery alongside his parents, who were of normal proportions, the size of McCaskill's burial mound dwarfs those of his mother and father. Museum and legacy McCaskill's presence lived on in English town for many years where his timber frame house sat on the edge of Kelly's Mountain, overlooking St. Anne's Harbor. The structure, with its massive door frames still stood, albeit in ruins, as late as the 1950s and the foundation was visible into the 1980s. Around 1900 the government of Nova Scotia replaced the family's original grave marker with a new one after the original had fallen into disrepair. Some of McCaskill's original personal effects from his house, including a bed frame, clothes and chair were removed for preservation and displayed for many years during the mid-20th century at the nearby Gaelic College of Celtic Arts and Crafts. These artifacts were moved back to Englishtown after the giant McCaskill Museum was established in the late 1980s on a road front portion of McCaskill's former property by the giant McCaskill Heirs Association. In addition to the collection from the Gaelic College, the museum in Englishtown also houses a more expanded collection of artifacts that had been maintained by family members. The giant McCaskill Museum was also established in 1989 at Dunvegan on the Isle of Skye and is operated there by a community group this museum having several replicated artifacts from the Englishtown Museum. It is managed by Peter McCaskill, father of the street trial cycle rider Danny McCaskill. In 1977, the new vessel on the Englishtown Ferry, a cable ferry running across the 700-foot wide, 210 meters, entrance to St. Anne's Harbor between Englishtown and Jersey Cove, was christened as the Angus McCaskill. Despite the relatively short crossing, it became the busiest ferry service in Nova Scotia, carrying hundreds of thousands of vacationers and residents every year until its replacement in 2008 by the newly built vessel Torquil McLean. See also Donald Dinny Angus Graham, Strongman, Stone put Western Isle's Strongest Man references external links The Tallest Man, Angus McCaskill The Human Marvels, Angus McCaskill, The Cape Breton Giant McCaskill.com.